Okay, for this lesson, we're gonna get right into how to use the camera app. And I gotta do it a little bit different than normal. Normally I have my overhead cam and you can just see what I'm doing on my desk. But this time I have to use my GoPro down below here so I can hold up the camera and we can see through the lens of the camera to see you know, basically how the camera app is working. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let me just tilt up our iPad here and let's open up the camera app and really start looking at all the different settings. Now I've made it in such a way that the camera is working really and doing a bad job because you can see I have a light here and then I have our different things that we want to shoot over here. So let's uh, get into it. First off, uh, over here on the left side, we have the zoom and it's a digital zoom. So you can see I can zoom in on things. I can zoom in on the angry bird back there. There's our angry bird and I can zoom back out. And honestly, 90% of the time, a digital zoom is a really bad idea. Okay, so, so it's, eh, stay away from it as much as possible. Now, for that other 10%, it can be an okay idea. So if it could work out, then go ahead and use it. But for the most part, just stay away from it. There really are two kinds of zooms in this world, uh, digital zooms and optical zooms. Optical is when it's an actual lens that you put on there and those work great, okay? But digital zooms, it's just zooming in on the pixels and it makes the pixels bigger and it makes it look kind of cheesy sometimes. But there are the occasion that it does work out. So if you're in that 10%, then use it. Okay, let's get back into it. Now you can see also that I'm in uh, landscape mode, which is normal. Uh, sometimes you do shoot in portrait mode, but uh, it all depends on the audience. Okay, so if you are going to be showing your photographs mostly on social media where it's a vertical, like in face Facebook, uh, then you can maybe shoot in portrait mode. But for the most part, since it's shown on, on projectors in your classroom and on iPads and on uh, MacBooks and those kind of things, laptops, you want to shoot mostly in uh, landscape mode with the iPad on the wide side like you see here. Okay, let's go over now to this other side and talk about it. The first is HDR up here, high dynamic range. Uh, that's something we're saving for the other levels. So we're just going to leave it turned off right now. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, below that is the, uh, the photographer's friend. This is self timer. So you can turn it on and then let's say you turn it on three seconds and then you uh, press the shutter. You can see it counting down. You now got three seconds to go run around, get inside your uh, photo there with your friends and then come, you know, and then it takes a photo of you. So it's, it's great because a lot of times as the photographer, you go cover the event like the science fair or whatever, and then you get back and realize there's no photos of you. So it's, it's, this is a really, like I said, the photographer's friend. You can prop up the iPad against something, turn on self timer, usually 10 seconds because it takes you a little while to get back in the photo. And then it gives you those 10 seconds counting down to run around and go get in your own photos. So I'm going to go back in there and turn that off. Uh, we all know what this button does. That turns the camera around from the rear camera to the front camera. Basically it's the selfie mode button, you know. And then we have the shutter button right here, the big white button that takes uh, photos for us. Uh, below that, like if I take a photo of Mike here, uh, we have the preview button. So you can just tap on that and it'll go right in and it'll show you what your uh, photograph looked like as well as you can scroll around. Uh, I'm just gonna hit the back button. That's a really good idea if you wanna make sure like, did everybody you know, have their eyes open? Is it a good shot? Is it well lit? Those type of things, okay? And then below that, we have our different shooting modes. Uh, we really are for the basics. We're gonna stay right in photo shooting mode. We're not gonna be going into any of the other things. Those are what we're gonna cover in the other levels. So we're just gonna leave it in photo mode and everything's good to go. Okay, so now let me show you a few things that you might not know. And that is the with the shutter button here. First thing we're gonna talk about is using the shutter button in burst mode. Now this is really important if you have some action going on. So if you're in a sporting event, your friend's about to do a layup with a basketball or, or shoots a goal with a soccer ball, this burst mode is great. So it makes it so you don't miss the shot that you're looking for. So how you do that is you just hold down the shutter button. It'll start to take a lot of shots. If you want to try this out, you need something moving. I don't really have anything moving in here. I don't have a pet or something that I can chase around. Uh, and, and make sure the camera is steady and just the object is moving around. You don't wanna be taking the camera and moving it everywhere for burst mode. You wanna just make sure something else is moving. So go find a, you know, a pet or a little brother, a little sister or something and have them run around. You can try it out. Be careful because it will fill up the memory on your camera, okay? So be really careful with it. Uh, but I'm gonna show you now, demonstrate. I'm gonna just show it here on mic and just hold it down. You can hear it um, start to take a bunch of photos. 
There, you hear that? That's it, taking all those photos. And if we were to go back in here, we would see one photo after another of the same photos, okay? So that's burst mode. Now let's talk about another thing, and that's if you want to use your volume controls as your shutter button as well. So I can just press my up or down volume, and those work as your shutter control. If you can't get over here to the button, maybe you're reaching around your iPad and you want to press it, uh, that's what also works. Okay, now the big thing that we need to talk about today is, that since this is a huge touch, touch screen, and you can see my grid is on there, and we're going to talk about that in the next level, uh, but tap to focus is the most incredible thing that's happened to photography in a long time. And what it is, is anywhere I tap, it'll adjust not only the focus, but the exposure or how light and how dark things are. So you can see it mostly finds mic because it, it's pretty smart. The iPad's really smart and it kind of knows what you want to take a photo of. But it, sometimes you have to force it and say, no, I don't actually want to take a photo of Mike in focus. He's going to be in the photo, just not the subject of the photo. The angry bird is what the subject is. So if you tap on that, now the angry bird is what's in focus and Mike is out of focus here. Okay, do you see that? Or if I tap on the light, it's going to adjust all the brightness and everything to the light. So now the light shows up actually really good uh, and everybody else is in the dark. But you can see all the details on the light. So it's in focus and the exposure has been adjusted to it. So that's really good. So again, we can tap on Mike. Mike's now in focus. There, I found it. And we can tap on the angry bird and he's in focus. Or we can uh, do a tricky one here, and this is called tap and hold to lock the focus and the exposure. So uh, if I, um, let's see, it's a good way to, so if I tap and hold right here on mic, tap and hold, you can see now the auto exposure and the uh, auto focus are locked. So if I actually move mic out of the way, um, everything still stays out of focus. See, the Angry Bird is still out of focus. Let me put mic in there and demonstrate what happens when we don't. Use uh, So let me just tap outside of it and that will unlock it. So now if I don't do it, you can see Mike is still in focus because the iPad is smart and knows kind of what you want to take a photo of. But if I move Mike out of the way, it now focused on the Angry Bird. Okay, so there are times when you want to lock the focus so you can really force the iPad to do what you want it to do. Okay, that kind of really concludes what we can do on the camera app. And what I need you to do now is just kind of go around your classroom or your home and, and just take a couple of photos with it. Try out all those things. Try the, the focus, try the uh, auto lock and try the zoom even, uh, try the burst mode, all those things just so we have a bunch of photos in your photography or sorry, in your photo app. And then in the next uh, lesson, we're going to go in there and uh, learn how to use the photo app. Mm -hmm.